Right, what is up everyone? I hope everybody is all good. Back with a back with a banger of a video here. Yeah? I haven't been on YouTube in about two weeks now. So this again, this this has come from the idea has come from um, some of my Twitter posts over the the last couple of days in regards to Bolton and the, the best way to go about it. Now I thought I wanted to make this video as a resource for people to always come back to. Uh, when they are going on a bulk, um, just in case you, you, if you're always unsure and you have these questions, how to do it the right way, what what do we do when we run into this roadblock, you should be able to always come back to this video and use it as a resource and to, to keep your head uh, keep your head straight and on, on the right path. So, bulking. Now, first thing, let's let's just get this get this get this straight. It isn't a an excuse to eat like an idiot and just get fat. That is not what we want to be doing with bullpen, okay? This is a controlled weight gain phase. We're not going to be, as I say, just eating everything in sight. That's, you know, that's um, that's an old school thing which needs to die, okay? So, let me start off with an example of, um, again, a lot of people watching this video could potentially be in this situation. Um, I don't think... I'm gonna have a lot of just complete beginners watching this stuff, and then maybe if someone is advanced, you know, 10, 12 years of trading, um, again, this this might not apply as much to them as someone who is two, three years um, in in the mixes with trading. So, I imagine a lot of us are here in this position. So, let's take a 25 year old male, right? Body weight, 200 pounds. We've been lifting for two years, and we've, we've been. You know, we've been following a program, delaying how to train, we've made some gains. Uh, we're now sitting at 20% body fat. Uh, we, we still want to gain muscle and get bigger, um, but we feel like we've, we're have we too fat at the moment and we've just reached our limit of, of and cap of body fat levels where we feel comfortable and feel healthy. So what do we do? Okay, what, what steps do we take uh, if we're in this situation? So... What I always tell, and um, what I always tell to clients that come on board with me or when, when people ask this question, is you want to get lean first, okay? You want to get down to that 8 to 12% body fat range before we start a bulk. Now, why would we want to do that? If we, if we start a bulk and we're, we're already 15% body fat, we're not going to be able to go on a productive bulk and cycle because we're going to have to cut very fast if we start at 15%. Give it a couple of months and we could be back at 20. And we don't want that. We want to start around 8 to 10, 8 to 12. And then we give ourselves a longer platform and a longer runway to build nice momentum with the bulk. Build up steam. Build up that performance in the gym. Just going in well fed for a, a long period of time. And, and really smashing performance in the gym. Because that is ultimately what is going to spark uh, the fuel for muscle growth. It's performance in the gym. So first thing we want to get down to 8 to 12% body fat. So obviously this isn't a video on how to get lean. I've got plenty of videos on that. We want to be on a consistent 5 to 1,000 a day calorie deficit until we get to our desired body weight. Okay, Drop 1 to 2 pounds a week for the next 10 to 16 weeks, give or take. So let's say our example of a man who's 200 pounds and he wants to get to 180 before he starts building again. Okay, That would be around 10% of his body, body fat or body weight so if he was 200 pounds at 20 percent to get down to around 10 percent he'd need to drop 20 pounds so he would need to go from 200 to 180 drop one to two pounds for the next 16 10 to 16 weeks and you're going to be there at 180 as i say got a bigger runway to bulk upon as we always want to build momentum on in bulk because building muscle is a slow process so the more momentum that we can stack everything goes in our favour, okay? So that's that bit out of the way, why we want to get lean first. So, we've we've got lean, and we're ready to go and set up our surplus. Now, what do we do? If we finish our diet, you know, we can, we can go through something called reverse diet, where you may you slowly increase your calories for a couple of weeks after you finish the surplus, or, or after you finish dieting, you go from being at your dieting calories and you slowly raise your calories back up for about a month to six weeks until you're ready to go to your surplus. Again, that's a topic for another video. I'm just telling you how to set up your surplus and what we need 
put an effective bulking phase, okay? So if we come from dieting and now we're ready to set up our service, now what are we looking for? 250 to 300 calories a day over maintenance. We don't need any more than that because we're just going to get excessively fat. There's like, there's like a cap or a limit for how much muscle we can gain in a day and what we need to do that. So going five, six, seven, eight hundred calories over your maintenance, we're just opening up the door to gain on once a body fat. Any less than 250, 300 calories a day, that's going to be very, very hard to track. And all it would take is one day for you to have an extra, uh, get some extra steps or extra uh, activity levels outside of the gym. And you could burn through your surplus and be back at maintenance and sometimes even in a deficit. We're trying to eat 50 to 100 calories over maintenance. That's just nonsense. We don't want to do that. Make sure we're in a surplus. 250 to 300, even up to 400, that's fine. So, for example, let's say someone's maintenance is 2,650. Eat 2,950 consistently, okay? In terms of what do we need with, with macros, what, what's the ballpark range? You can't go wrong with protein at one gram per pound of body weight, you know, even as low as 0.8 per gram per pound of body weight in a bulking phase because as I say carbs and fats they can be muscle sparing too so fill the remainder of your calories with carbs and fats as you see fit this is not a debate whether we want to keto or, uh, or all that sort of stuff you do what you want here it doesn't bother me just keep the calories is the main thing okay protein at a decent level personally I go higher carb approach but then this is this is all up to you okay again going into the nutrition side of things that's out of the scope of this video you do what you want with that okay so we set up our surplus and that's the main thing we're good to go then foods to eat again this is basic and this is probably nothing that nothing new to anyone but again i've got to put that in there so you all know protein sources your steak chicken pork fish lamb all that good stuff we, we know the drill with that carbs white rice yucca plantains fruit potatoes pasta salad or bread more easily digestible stuff. I think people always ask me about brown rice and things like that. Look, if you like brown rice and you can you can eat that without any digestive problems, that's fine. You go ahead for that. I personally can't eat too much brown rice because it, it upsets my stomach and we don't want that in the bulk and face. So you want foods that are gonna digest easily, okay, especially from your carb sources. Fats, good fat sources, olive oil, butter, ghee, avocado. Uh, you're going to get a lot of your fat from your meats and fish anyway, especially cuts of salmon, higher cuts of, uh, higher fattier cuts of meat, things like ribeyes, um, higher, higher fattier cuts of lamb, stuff like that. That's going to have some fat in and obviously nuts, walnuts, almonds, anything like that. But I, what I find, even myself, I get a lot of my fat um, from meat and fish without having to add any other stuff. But if you are going to add some things, go for the good stuff like this, okay? Right, so that's the food to eat. Now, again, this isn't a video on how to train on the bulk. I've got other videos on that. If you go back on my YouTube channel, you go back to six, seven videos previous. I've got upper body training examples and lower body training examples. Have a little look at that. But just as an overview, the training is the spark for muscle growth. So we need to make sure that we're driving performance up over time and we're giving our body a good reason to grow, especially while we're in the surface. This is the best time to do that. You wanna spend the most of your time training in that five to 30 rep range. Train anywhere in that five to 30 rep range. As long as you are taking your sets close to failure in that range, you are going to build muscle, get strong across a multitude of different rep ranges and different movements, drive your numbers up, across a variety of exercises that work for you they fit your structure okay that's a big one and just get strong as fuck over the next year beat your logbook over time pushing your body weight up performance going up that is the key uh, to building muscle mass you are not going to build muscle mass out of thin air trying to use that maintenance year round and just pushing the same loads year on year out it just doesn't work like that we need to drive progression body weight must go up nice and slow and we must try progression in the gym with good technique and movements that fit our structure, okay? Screenshot that, and that's your, that's your basis for your training, okay? Now, next one. Rate of weight gain. Again, another important thing, because we don't want to be gaining too slow, and we, we don't want to be gaining too fast, that we're just getting fat. That's, nobody wants that. So what we're looking for on average is around 0 0.5 it's a one percent of body weight per per month for most that's going to be a good range and that's probably going to put most of us in that one to one to two pounds a month and that's what we're looking for okay 
as I say, any more than two pounds a month. If we're gaining four or five pounds a month, we're just getting fat. We're not building. We're not building muscle. Well, we are still building muscle, but we're just accumulating a lot of fat, which is pointless. Okay. Any less than one pounds a month, how can we track that? If we're gaining zero point five pounds a month, you know, over the course of a year, that's just extremely slow, and it's just, what's the point? You, you want to be in a decent range, one to two pounds a month, so you can really be hundred percent confident that you are eating enough food to fuel muscle growth. Okay. Because you don't, we don't want to be in that situation where we can't track what we're gaining and we could just actually be spinning our wheels and, and sitting at maintenance for most of the year and again nobody wants that we don't just want to waste our time we want to be making sure that we're driving progression and we are moving forward okay measuring your rate of gain now this is an, another one that people people don't really do this it's something i never used to do many years ago when I, and i've since learned over the last couple of years and it's, it's such a good tool you want to take the average weight over the course of a seven to 14 day period. So how do we do that? You wanna weigh yourself every day, okay? Get your scales, put them somewhere that you know you're gonna weigh yourself every day. I have mine in, in the bathroom. I weigh myself every day under the same conditions, okay? That's key. I go to the toilet every morning and then I weigh myself, okay? Every day, same conditions. If you change the conditions, if you weigh yourself one day in the morning and then the next day at night after you've had four meals, obviously, yeah, you're going to get a different reading and we don't want that weigh yourself at the same time every day pick a time which suits you and track your your weight at that same time every day okay so when we get that so let's let's say from monday to monday or sunday to sunday you have a seven day uh, reading of your weight okay take those seven readings add them all together divide by seven and that's going to give you the average okay monitor that over a seven day period but don't make any adjustments until after a 14-day period, okay? Now, I'll tell you why. So, why 14-day period? Especially on a bulk, your body, it, it goes, it will gain weight in spurts. Sometimes you might not see as much of a gain after seven days because, let's be honest, seven days is, just, is, is a can be a short period of time. I always like 14 days, okay? I never make any hasty decisions after seven days. Give it 14 days. Because sometimes your body weight can stay the same after seven days, but then after 14 days, the average is it's spurted up. Now, if you would have took your reading from seven days and started increasing calories, there was no need to do that. Your body was just was, was very, very slow to catch up. So we want to be, you need to be pretty patient with the way you're going to add calories. So that's why I like to have, it's, the four, it's a 14 day average. That's why I like to look at, okay, I take the data. We obviously take the seven day average, but we don't change nothing. We just need to zoom out on the 14 days, okay, and see how the weight is going up. So, if we're gaining too fast after a 14 day period, now let's say, you know, let's say we're trying to gain one to two pounds every month. Now, let's say we've gained two pounds after 14 days. Now, what should we do? Okay, that could be an insane, a sign that we need to maybe drop 100 to 200 calories or increase daily activity levels, maybe an extra 1,000 or 2,000 steps, maybe a tiny bit of cardio a couple of times a week, 10 or 15 minutes, for example, on a, on a treadmill, a bike, whatever it may be. You've got two options and two ways you can play that, okay? Make a little adjustment to your calories or activity levels, and then go again for the next 14 days and monitor the changes again. Nine times out of 10, that will set you straight and you'll be back on the right path. What about if we're gaining too slow after a 14-day period? Again, let's say we want to gain you know, one to two pounds. Let's say after 14 days, we're the exact same weight, okay, as what we was 14 days ago. Our average has not budged at all. If anything, it looks like it could be trending down as such. Well, let's add 100 to 200 calories, okay, to your macros and go from there. Again, run that for 14 days, make any adjustments. And eventually, you're going to find a sweet spot where we're in that, that, that the nice range of the gains where we need to be. And then it's easy money from there. We just keep rolling, okay? So that's measuring rate of gain. Now, let me just move my face over here. Now, let's let's take an example bird's eye view of how this could play out. Now, let's say someone is starting their bulk in June and we're starting at 182 pounds. You know, we're pretty lean. We're around 10% body fat. Now, we're looking, we're looking to gain some muscle mass. So how, how will this play out? Now, if you look here, this is a full year bulk. This is a 12-month period of being in a slight surplus. Now, this is a perfect 
rate of gain. If you set up your bull correctly and we're trading correctly, this is what we would like to see and this is how it's done. So let's say you start at 182, £182. First month, we're up £2. That's great. Next month, 1.5, 1.5 again, £1, £2, £2. Can you see we're, we're in that £1 to £2 range every single month? Some months are less, some months are more, but we're never, we're never going over uh, that £2 or we're under £1. We're just we're in that sweet spot. And over the course of a year, that's a nice long bulk. We, we, we're back to £200. Now, I guarantee if you started from... 200 pounds and you got down to 182 and you're at 10% and then you start at this bulk when you're at this 200 pounds again the second time around now going through a good year long bulk where you've been driving your numbers up in the gym we've been driving our performance up across the board on all of our movements we're, we're hitting rep PRs we're touching weights that we've never touched before while simultaneously pushing our body weight up and now we're back at 200 stronger than ever I guarantee you, you're going to have a lot more muscle mass on your frame at this £200 than at the £200 you was a couple of years ago before you started the diet to get down to this 182. This is what it's about. You have to go through these phases of gaining weight and pushing your performance up in the gym. That's a year, a year's worth of consistent training and dieting and sleep, recovery, all that stuff. This does not happen in two months or some bullshit in six weeks. This is a year of work. Now, obviously, this is not 20 pounds of muscle. Far from it. You are going to accumulate some body fat. That's perfectly normal. Now, let's say you're someone in the gym, you've had two years of experience, and you've just gained... So this would, this would be your third year of training, right? If you've gained 20 pounds over the course of a year, there's a good chance that you could be in the range of five, six, seven pounds of muscle gained in that year. Because if you're only in your third year of training, that is feasible. So you've gained 20 total pounds and you've gained five, six, seven pounds of muscle and maybe 10 to 13 pounds of body fat. You can diet that 13 pounds of body fat that you've accumulated off here. You can, you can get rid of that in six to eight weeks easily, but it's took you a year to gain that six, seven pounds of muscle. And that's what's going to make the difference to your frame and, and, and how you look and, and getting jacked that's what it's about now this is just a one year cycle now if you want to get really freakishly jacked and look like an absolute unit do this do these cycles put put these together for the next 10 to 15 years and then come back to me that's the type of like you need to step out and look okay this is what we need to do this is we don't get jacked in one or two years put a decade together of these type of cycles cutting and bulking cycles I guarantee you're going to be a different person so I think it's good for you to see, you know, how a how a successful bull could be run and what you'd be looking for. Okay. So where are we? So just like an important important closing points. You don't want don't want to waste your bulk. Now, as I said at the start, going into a surplus and eating a little bit more food than our body needs, this is the perfect environment. It's a very, very anabolic environment for you to grow muscle. Do not waste this year opportunity of a bulking phase. Too many people, they are on point and they are on the ball when they're in their dieting phase. They're very locked in with training. They're locked in with recovery. They're locked in with sleep. And then all of a sudden when they go into a bulk, they just get ex extremely sloppy and they start eating bullshit food. They start ordering Uber Eats, you know, training days. They start to dwindle. They just, they take the foot off the, off the pedal. But that's... That's stupid because this is where you build your physique. You build your physique in the off season and when you're on a slight surplus, this is going to make you look better when you next diet down. All of your hard work in these bulking phases will all be revealed when you next diet down. Do not forget that. You need to be even more locked in on these bulking phases because this is the money. This is where you build your physique. And too many, as I say here, too many are skipping this part. Too many are wanting to run around lean year rounds, trying to. Uh, some coaches who are they're staying they're staying shredded year round, but they're, they're only trying to sell products, whether it be fucking cookbooks or yeah, coaching to people, bullshit product, whatever it is. But the, the, they're trying to sell a brand or whatever. Nobody who got jacked stays stayed extremely lean year round. Okay, they might have got to that point. And now they stay there because they're, they're, they've, they've built all their muscle over the last decade and now they just stay lean and promote to everyone this is what you need to do. 
it's bullshit. To get a good physique, you need to spend time going through both phases again. And you're not always going to look your best through these phases, but it's part of the process. You cannot skip this part, okay? It's massive. Right, what else have we got? Just to finish off, it wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't finish off with something like this. Muscle mass, it won't grow out of thin air, it doesn't grow on trees. Slowly push your body weight up and train like you, you know, your life depends on it, okay? I guarantee that is going to set you straight for a good productive bulking phase, okay? Just a final note as I think back to my own training over these last 12 years. I have, I have never been shy of a good old bulking phase. I've never been shy to, to push my body weight up there and pound the food down and, and just really get stronger in the gym. It's been pivotal to my success to where I am now uh, in terms of how much muscle I've got on my frame, how strong they are. It's all come from following these bulking, these bulking phases, you know, followed by some cuts, bulking again, and just, just consistently just doing these cycles intelligently. And, and just you know, pushing your body weight up and, uh, and pushing your performance to new levels over time. That's ultimately what's going to build your physique. And you can't skip this part. You can't. You don't want to be running around skinny year round, just uh, trying to flex abs in the mirror. It's like, you know, we're not going to get big and strong like that. Okay. So that is the video, everyone. Uh, let me know what you think. Any any video ideas, any comments that you've got, for any questions, just put them down below for me. Uh, I like making these style of videos. It feels good to get into the, the nitty gritty and into the weeds with some of this stuff. I can't do this on Twitter with short form content and short form posts. So I like to get in these videos and really ramble on. All right, so let me know what you all think. And I'll talk to you in the next one.